big shout out to all the subscribers. It's been a while, but a lot has gone down. And I thought it was time to do a little bit of a July preview. There's a couple major things I was like, I just got to tell the crew about this, particularly with Alex Reyes and some barrel rates observations that we have to go through. But first, I just want to touch on a couple notes for you guys subscribing to the channel. I'm going to branch out a little bit. I'm going to branch out. I've been getting my boy involved. It's a little bit of a podcast format with video. I'm just calling it meditations. You know, that fantasy baseball is just one of my many hobbies and interests, and so I've got some other information to share that I'm not really finding out there in the common dialogue, just some philosophies, some theories. You guys can ask questions. I don't know where it's going to go. I don't even know what topics we're going to cover. I've dropped two videos so far. They're a little rough. They're longer. They're like an hour. The audio, getting better with practice. So when you see those come up, you might be like, oh, wait, what is, I'm looking for fantasy baseball. What, what, what is Jaylee talking about the client phase capitalism for? I am just want to hear about fantasy baseball. Just, just ignore it. I'm going to try to sort through the channel a little bit. So, you know, that stuff will come up probably meditations, fantasy baseball. Watch out for that. A little bit of creative, maybe something to put you to sleep on a long drive or something. Could be controversial on one hand because I can be edgy and direct. It could also be creative. So we'll see how that goes. Also, I mean, it just seems kind of intuitive. We might have to get into some NFL auction activity. You know, I'm going to be doing some. I mean, that's why we're here is just to dominate some auction leagues, sharpen it up a little bit, and then I foresee potentially NBA. Like, is this rolling into a three-sport thing? Do we have any three-sporters out there, two-sporters? So watch out for that. But let me get back. Let's, let's get into the real stuff. Let's start with it. My love affair with Alex Reyes is over. It's over. Basically, Alex Reyes and I, we had a massive separation last night. I had to cut him in all my leagues. I was willing to pick up almost anything on the wire. Let me tell you how it happened. So I'm, I'm going in, I'm looking, I'm like, I want to pick up a fresh starter because I'm going to grind this week. And I click on Alex, like, man, how long am I going to hold him for? Is he going to get the nod? I hear he gets removed from a start with, with like a sore, a sore pectoral muscle. So I, I need to be a doctor. I'm scouting the internet. I'm looking for someone that's there. I'm looking for YouTube videos so I can see his, his expression or how the trainer talked to him. And I'm digging, I'm digging, I'm digging. I got to give this guy a shout out. I find Chris O'Leary at The Pain Guy on Twitter. He dropped like one singular pod talking about his frustration because I guess he's a St. Louis Cards fan with Alex Reyes and the closer, a little flamethrower over there whose name escapes me at the moment, how they both got injured, and he's pissed off. He's pissed off that people are, are not paying attention to the high injury rates of new pitchers, why it's happening, what's going on with Velo, and then he goes into this like mechanics dissertation. Apparently, he's been studying guys' mechanics since 2006. You know, this guy's there's 2002, 3. He's a student of the game. He's coaching Little League. He used to play... He's had some injuries. He's a Nolan Ryan fan. So he broke down a lot of information. He broke down a lot of stuff. And without knowing more, like we're waiting for the results of Alex Reyes. And I'm convinced that Alex Reyes is donezo. He's talking about, I'll get into it with you. I mean, I'm just stealing it from him if he can't find it. But he says that coaching instructors are finding ways to get short-term gains, short-term velocity gains, because that's all we're talking about is velocity. So they're, they're doing certain things. They're talking about scap loading. They're talking about over pronation. I can't even see it where, where they're supposed to show the ball back to second base, the power T, the inverted W. He's describing all these positions that some coaches on one hand are teaching, but that he says mechanically because of timing issues are leading to injuries. And he just said, you know, I looked at Alex Reyes and he's got this flat arm syndrome and the way his mechanics are, first it gets the elbow, Tommy John surgery, then it gets the shoulder and that's when he ripped that lat and he came back and now he ripped a pectoral, which essentially is just another piece of the shoulder. So you have these tremendous athletes, they can't get right because of mechanical stuff and I just found his takes interesting. 
it gave me another step of analysis. Uh, when that land foot, when that plant foot hits for a pitcher, where they are mechanically is really important. That elbow, the hand has to be up, the ball should face third base. And, and he went through old tweets where he was just calling out injuries. My boy Matt Harvey, people want to get, have him to get long and get into his power T. He's like, not going to work. Um, other guys who just had quick breakdowns to their year. He threw a warning flag out there, and I don't want to say it. Walker Bueller, who's already done the elbow. Let's segue into Walker a little bit. I mean, this is the thing with pitching. So, yeah, slow start. We weren't impressed. We weren't that happy. What was the 16K gem? I mean, what, 16? A 12 would have been fine. He goes, I, I don't know, it was 7 innings, 16K gem. So he can get filthy, he can get right. And sometimes guys can get shelled a little bit. So you're seeing that volatility with pitching. And I don't know, just hearing about this warning and knowing that Bueller is a Verducci candidate, I mean, I wouldn't be super reluctant to dangle him and maybe move him on injury speculation. That's risky. I'm not moving him. I love Walker Bueller. Maybe he's special. I'm just going to stick with it. So, yeah, it's over with Alex Reyes. I'm, even my long-term confidence with Reyes is dented. He's talking about after the, the injuries mount and then the velocity's down, it never really comes back. They need to make mechanical adjustments. So that's pretty sad. Um, St. Louis is reeling there. I wish that closer's name. You know, he's out too. He mentioned his same mechanical problems. He's generating the 100-plus velocity through some additional mechanical issues. So I find it all interesting. Good study there. We've been witnessing this prospect renaissance. You know, it started, we're drafting Eloy and Vlad. You know, we're seeing what happens with Senzel. There were names. I tried to get you guys on Gordano Alvarez. It was a long stash. It really was. I'm going to say something ridiculous. I'm going to say that. And you'll never believe this, but I can. Things I do with my fantasy lineup affects the real-life game. Actually, the reverse. You're thinking the game is affecting your numbers. That It just feels like sometimes my lineup is, is too stacked. And the guy, I might be holding him back. And I just have to cut him to unlock him. So I've got Jordano all over the place. And I'm like, what's going on? Why won't he come up? So just one league, I just said, you know what? Fuck. That's it. I'm just going to cut him. I'm going to go get a piece of old man Jay Bruce. I cut Jordano. He's called up the next morning. Good thing I kept him in all the other leagues. Obviously, I didn't get him off of waivers when he came back. It's very sad, but I was able to unlock Jordano. The prospect renaissance has been tough. It's tough on who to trust. It's tough on how long to trust them. The other thing is I couldn't have every prospect. I mean, as they, they came up, you couldn't make room for... Hira, and then Keyboom, and then you got Low at Tampa Bay, and then Austin Riley comes up, and Chavis starts hitting, but you were on Hira, so you didn't get a piece of Riley, and then Hira got sent down, and then it's just, it's been crazy. I'm a little disappointed with Eloy and Vlad, right? I, I wanted 300. I wanted just domination, and they're kind of middling at 260. But I'm keeping my head up. I still have confidence that they make some adjustments. There's a lot of season left. We're talking about approaching about the 80-game midpoint. Everything that happened in the first half, even if it went against you, could be the complete reverse and you get it all back in the second half. So I'm still glad to have these guys. I've been enjoying the renaissance. I just can't believe how much of a beast Austin Riley is. And everyone wants to keep saying, like, oh, the strikeout rate is going to catch up to him and the aggressive approach. And then I look down, there he is with like a two-run shot, two-run shot, two-run shot all the time. So I've got him at third base in a lot of spots. I am going to support you guys getting back on Keston Hira if he gets the call. I see him getting dropped in some leagues. Keston Hira was the real deal. Shaw has been pretty suspect. So definitely look out for that. Maybe even stash that because the bat is so real. But the main reason I'm here, this is the main observation for the day, these barrel rates and what the other podcasters are talking about with the ball. So just as I jump over to these barrel rates, you know, and we couldn't have anticipated this. I don't want to segue on you guys too much, but let's just do it now. The podcasters, they're just, you know, like I said, they're going to be talking about how their pitching sucks all season long 
and how unbelievable it is and where they last and you know why did they take all these pitchers and Kluber and Carrasco and all these guys that are killing us and and they're just in denial that the pitching was volatile. You were making terrible, terrible mistakes in draft prep. And so it's funny to listen to. I tried to find a clip where the guys were complaining as predicted, but it's just it's going on way into the season as they try to right the ship. And I start to wonder, well, when there's no pitching again, so the, are the couple guys that end the season well, are they going to be pushed into the first round again because of scarcity? Or are you going to accept that it's volatile? But this is the main thing. Barrel rates... 2019, I mean, all preseason, we went through the historical data about barrel rates, about who had the highest barrel rates. That's why we're up on a J.D. Martinez. We would scan for guys that popped 8.5s or 9s and how, you know, how that level barrel rate was pretty good. Or even if I go just to 2018, let me click on it here, and just describe... What changed? I mean, 2018, the, the top five guys have barrel rates of 12, 12, 11, 10.6, 10.7. And then it drops, and then they're in the nines. There's only, there's only 10 guys in a nine. Everybody's sub eight. So a nine is very good, and eight would be good. We go to 2019, and, and those were consistent. I don't need to go back to 17, 16, 15, 14, but you go to 2019. And I wanted to wait before I talked about this a little bit because I was like, you know, maybe it's the beginning of the season, maybe small sample, guys are hot, pitchers aren't stretched out, but we're 80 games in. Like some of these rates don't look like they're going to drop that badly. We have, we have 12, 4, 20, there's 20 guys that are 10s. There's 22 guys with 10s for a barrel rate. The elite, what what I thought was an elite, an 11 barrel rate, that's Freddie Freeman, Kron, Olsen, Yelich, Springer, Rendon, Alonzo, Trout, Abreu. I mean, the barrel rates are crazy. And where 9 I thought was special, there's there's guys that are 30 deep. Renato Nunez has a 9.2 barrel rate. Roberto Perez at catcher. I mean, even Donaldson on the bounce back, Rowdy Telez. So there's tons of 8s, there's tons of 9s. Guys are squaring it up, but we also have increased velocity. So, so as much as the as much as the casters want to talk to me about the ball has changed, and maybe that it's a juiced ball. It seems like they've they've talked about there's less drag on the ball, less resistance, so it can fly farther. But that's not the only problem, because the barrel rate is defined by launch angle and some velocities. If there's re reduced drag on the ball, there's a good chance that there's been some reduced movement. And I'm not going out and doing studies. I could go look at X movements and Y movements and Z movements, and people could go do studies and look at you know this a small amount of change and, and guys not able to get enough movement on the pitch. But it would seem to me that these pitchers can't get it off the bat a little bit. And this is a game not just of inches. This is a game probably of like millimeters. You know, just the slightest variation is the difference between a foul and a grounder, a fly ball, and a home run. The margin for error is very small. So now when the pitchers can't get it moving, it's like, is everybody in course field? You know, is this just some kind of crazy course field effect that the barrel, that everybody can square it up? Jay Bruce, Mitch Moreland, Cruz? I mean, these guys are... So the whole league is hitting. You know, how, how do you adjust? Does it mean that... A 4.2 ERA is good now. I mean, at the end of the week, you're just it's your pitching that's getting rocked versus his pitching that's getting rocked. Who got rocked a little less? How do you keep up with hitting on any given day? I mean, there were, I look at some teams and I'm like, man, how did this? How is this guy beating me? How is this guy doing anything? Well, everybody's hitting. Everybody can hit. So the league's not that deep. You can go to the waivers. There's, there's more guys that could hit. There's some guys I believe are good hitters. And, and suddenly, against my better judgment, my benches are just filling up with hitters. I can't, I can't cut Domingo Santana. I've got, I've got Eloy on some benches. All these guys can hit. And then some of the prospects came up. So this barrel rate phenomena, I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. But everybody's hitting. And so 
I kind of came to a little bit of a conclusion that this is what was happening to the league. Tie it back into the pitching and the scap loading and finding cheap velocity. MLB is concerned that nobody's watching it. That's why they added in, you know, the pitch clock or the limit the mound visits. And people like runs. People like scores. That's why the NFL is a throwing league. And, you know, they want to up, up the runs and the excitement of the game. And so the league, you're seeing increased velocity. And then you have the runs being shut down. And they're like, the only way we're going to get these guys to hit is to get a different kind of ball. Did it go too far? You know, now the velocity is up and the pitchers are getting injured and they can't move the ball and all the hitters are just squaring it up. Is that where the league has evolved to? But this is quite a jump. This isn't just some regular jump. I mean, looking at the bell rates from year to year, it was four years. Even 17, we thought, was a little bit of a juice ball era. But it wasn't absurd barrel rates. You know, it's going to be interesting how we prepare for next season, what we look at, how we line these guys up. And, yeah, there is a second half, and things could change, so we've got to keep our eye on it. But so far, guys are just crushing it. I'm frustrated. I'm going through a little bit of a rough patch. Obviously, you know from me, when an Al DeBerto Mondesi hits the IL, I'm going to suffer. I'm going to suffer a little bit in every league. He's leading the league in steals or at least second or third. And I'm going to miss him. I'm going to miss him in all leagues. As much as he was able to bounce over to sec to shortstop, I just didn't have a lot of second base redundancy. I got a little bit of Young Moncada out there. I picked up some things. I think I got some Chavis. So, yeah, the rough patch is upon me. And then he lost Buxton. And then he lost Story. A lot of guys that I was owning, and you know, the bent, the IO was already filled up where I'm dealing with like a Caleb Smith or a Domingo Herman. Just lost the closer. Thought I was getting Reyes in a week. He was just, he's just going to be a zero. So it, it's going to be a little bit of a rough patch. I haven't seen how it's, how it's shaking out yet. Just keep making moves. Just keep tinkering. Keep grabbing guys. Keep streaming stuff. Just a quick update on the podcast league, all the guys that have been watching the videos and that jumped in the league. That is a super competitive league. Guys are in there just killing it. I think of a 12-team league, there's like nine teams that are all within eight points of each other, all within striking range of a championship. So we're just in there battling it out, hitting waivers. Nothing's on the waivers. Guys are just killing it. So that was one of the reasons I was like, you know what? I mean, I'm going to be drafting fantasy football auction teams. It's hard to say. I mean, like, I, I do understand baseball pretty well and the metrics, and I like to have that slight competitive edge. You know, even with all the craziness and the draft season, like, I have, I have six auction teams, and you could argue how competitive they are or, you know, how good the guys were, but I'm in the top four in those leagues. So I'm just doing a little bit better than the pack. I got a couple first-place teams that just turned out to be kind of ridiculous. We're hoping to win some championships, and I like to do it in football. And I'll do a little prep with you guys, but the football, there's no, there's no magic. There's no magic like, like BABIP and FIP and XFIP for me. I know there's a dot out there and different metrics that guys are looking at. I, I like game film. I like league scenario, but we can get into that. Let me save that for later. The main thing is I, I want to, if I'm going to start, we're going to open a league up right away. We're going to get an auction going because it's fun. Everybody's hungry. We can put a little reward in it at the end. Um, it's going to be a super flex because I got a certain format of league that I think is ideal. So keep your eye out for that. Watch out for the new stuff. Feel free to comment. I don't know. I don't know what's in your wheelhouse. Feel free to skip it. I'm hoping it doesn't turn you off too much. Check in for the baseball. Check in for... Maybe we do some basketball. I hope your guys' leagues are doing well. We just got to keep grinding. We're about to hit July. You know, it's about to warm up in Texas and in, and in Chicago. And there's really a lot of baseball left. So, how about you, boy?